Do we have time for two more? Is two good? All right. Uh, yes. Right. Yes, you uh, okay. right there. Yes. Um, I'm curious with the gift of the wonderful gift of time, 55, 56 years now. When you revisit this film, something you made before you were married, before you had children. When you see it now, after children, after grandchildren, do you see, I'm sure you see something different than the rest of us. Do you see like your children, your grandchildren, other family members' expressions? I'm just curious, revisiting this, what kind of things come to your mind with this wonderful gift of time to reflect on it? Well, my, my, uh, my granddaughter's here tonight, and she's sitting next to me. <laughs> I'm here and my and I keep looking at my I just look at Daisy. Look at Daisy. Daisy just started uh uh Breton school from from uh Minneapolis and uh Had you seen it before? I think she had seen it before. She's, not, she's in the bathroom? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boy, she's going to regret that. <laughs> but, uh, not. I, don't, I don't know if I really understood the, the question. It's... Uh, how has time changed your view of this movie? Is that is that a fair way to... Well, it's just that when I look at old photos of my, of my life and my family, I see since then, like other family members reflected in them. I'm just curious if you see... Do you see other... Do you see other... of your own family members reflected in, in this movie? Do you see, like, for instance, your brother? Do you see him in Benjamin? Well, that's a quick story. I can... Yeah. I'm taking up too much time, but... Uh, and my wife... Uh, she says, be careful. Anything you say in one second goes around the world. <laughs> and it's out of context. <laughs> Tell him about Ronnie. My, he said to me one day... Uh, Nichols. That, oh, that's what I forgot. That's, I, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're rehearsing, and he takes me... Yes, thank you. Uh, he takes me aside, Mike, and he says, uh, after he asked me about the, being a virgin, and he says, did you, uh, did you have any heroes? when you were a, a kid. Who was you, like in the movies? I said, kind of. I said, I when I saw, I didn't have a good, I wouldn't consider my brother and I didn't have a very good upbringing and I would never want to repeat it. Uh, it, it and, and, and it doesn't sound like much, it didn't feel like much fun uh, growing up. But, uh, but I remember as a kid seeing this film, The Yearling, and Gregory Peck was with the deer, and I wanted Gregory Peck to be my father so bad, because he looked, oh man, he was friends with the deer, he was friends with the kid, I think it was Brandon DeWilda, wonderful uh, uh, kid actor. Uh, but he said, do you have anyone else who was your hero in, in real life? And I said, my brother, my, my, my brother's almost seven years older, and it's just the two of us, and so I never felt like he was a brother because he was like it was like a third parent. Yeah. So in a sense, I was like the only kid, and I was always trying to imitate my brother. And my brother was the opposite of me. I was, you know, ADD is a kind of nice way to put it, but I I, <laughs> I couldn't concentrate on anything. I was out the window, sitting in class, daydreaming, you know. And my brother was a straight A student, and he was only five foot five and a, and a half, but he was on the, you know, varsity uh, football team, you know, varsity baseball team, he was a great athlete, and a straight eight, I mean, he was the winner. And uh, I was programmed, uh, you know, to be uh, the loser in a sense. <laughs> and I think maybe that's one of the reasons I got depressed, because my plan didn't work. <laughs> I wanted to please my father by staying a loser. <laughs> Something stopped. Well, you failed at that. <laughs> but, uh, so I said I would imitate my brother when we were rehearsing, and he said, uh, so why don't you do the scene again? It's a scene with uh, uh, Anne Bancroft, I think, uh, the one in the, maybe in the restaurant, uh, and, uh, and I did it, and 
And, and, he, and he said, okay. He says, uh, do it again. He says, your brother ever, how was he when he was uptight? Did you ever see him uptight? I said, yeah. He says, well, what did he do? I says, well, I, I really, you know, I would answer the phone and I could pretend like I was my brother when the girls would call to talk to him and I could get away with it. And I was, you know, I knew how he would answer. I, I mean, I observed him a lot. And I said when he was uptight, he would stop breathing. I could tell when he was pissed off at me. He just, you know, no, there was no air coming in or out. And, uh, and then after a while, he continued to be pissed off. He would, there would be this, <coughs> and he said, so do the scene like that. And I did it like that. And then he said, okay, now just do the scene again and forget about all of that and just see what essence remains of, this is a wonderful director. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, mm. was born. 